Hello everyone and welcome back. We're going to continue building out our color game. So let's, as always, let's identify the things we want to accomplish in this video. Step number one, we're going to um, add comments to our code. We're going to add some better comments to make it a little bit more clear as to what everything does and do a little bit of rearranging to make everything just easier to read. Step number two is going to be add our button, easy hard buttons. As part of that, as to A, we're going to add a selected class to our CSS. And then for three, we're going to be an add click listeners to these buttons. Four is going to be to add logic to the easy button. Five is going to be add logic to the hard button. And then finally, for six, we're going to add num squares. It's a new variable. This is actually going to be our state to track state. Update as needed. And we'll talk about what state is when, when we get there. So step number one, we're going to add some better comments. Um, I like, this is just my personal preference, to set off major sections like this to make it easier to understand. So major sections, I like that. Um, those are our, our helper functions, and down here at the bottom we have another one. We have change colors, which I'm going to move up here. So those are our helper functions, and then we have oops, copy. Then we have kind of the init variables. Or initializing our variables. That's when we set our colors, that's when we select our elements, stuff like that. Um, pick the winning color. I'm actually going to move this down here. So we're selecting our elements. There. And then, oops, we've got, if We've got our main, our main function or our main code. Where we're adding emit listeners, we're setting the color display, things like that. If you come from a C++ background or a Java or a Python or something like that, this is, would be our main function. In um, JavaScript, you generally don't do that. You can, um, but it's just not the convention. So that one's done. Now we add our easy and hard buttons. That's in our HTML. Those come, if you'll notice, after our span in the middle. So let's just add a button with an ID, easy button, call that easy, and then duplicate, hard button, hard. So we added our buttons, and we're going to add a selected class to our CSS. And we'll use this to for the button highlighting. See how blue is like that? Now it's blue. Hard, easy, hard, easy. We'll use that to do that. So selected. Right now we're just going to set the background color to blue. Let's go ahead and add that to hard mode. Class equals selected. And see what it looks like. Now we have easy mode and hard mode. You'll notice that hard is blue because it is selected. So we have accomplished that. Now we're going to add click listeners to both of these buttons. That's going to be inside of our main loop. So we've got our variables. We got to select the buttons first. Const easy button equals document dot get element by ID easy button. Duplicate this hard button. Now we have both of our easy button and our hard button. I'm just double checking that that is indeed the ID I gave them. Yes. So now we have to add click listeners to them. And we can do this pretty much anywhere inside main we want. I'm going to do it under the reset button. Easy button. I'm going to add an event listener on click. Remember we are always using our traditional function declaration for event listeners just to get in the habit. So the first thing we need to do here is to add the selected class. So uh, this 
dot class list dot add selected. Let's test that and see if it works. Yep, it's been added. But we also need to remove it from the hard. So hard button dot class list dot remove selected. Refresh. Boom. Now that works. Perfect. Now the functionality for this is not there yet because we need this in order to finally set the functionality up. But we're going to get there. And so the next step is to just basically copy this for the hard button, switching everything. This is going to bug me. Hard, oops. So instead of easy button, I want it to be hard button. This and then easy button. Let's see if that works. Can I talk, can I jump back and forth? I sure can. Perfect. So now we have the display working. So we add the listeners, we added some basic logic. I should actually move these down here because we need this num squares to track the state. Now the concept of state is a little bit um, tricky for some people, but basically it's just global variables that you can access throughout your program is an easy way to, to think about it. When you get into some more advanced frameworks like React or things like that, you'll you'll come into the concept of state a lot, and they'll point out that it is not necessarily global variables. Um, you don't, generally speaking, want global mutable state, um, but that's kind of a more advanced topic. So what we're going to do is we are just going to, inside our variables, we're going to create a variable called numSquares. So we'll just call the state. Let numSquares equal six. It's going to be six by default. And what this is going to allow us to do is to track how many squares we want on the screen at any given time. So when I click easy, I want the squares to go down to three. When I click hard, I want them to go up to six. It will also allow us to add a super hard or something like that to add nine or 12 or however many we want. So for this to work, instead of letting colors equal generate random color six, we want it to be num squares. Same thing with the reset button. Instead of it just being six, we want it to be num squares. And all we will need to do is basically update that num squares variable, which we can do right here. So when they click easy button, num squares equals three. So let's click easy and reset. And you'll see that only the top three colors are resetting. The bottom three are not. Now they're still displaying but only the top three are resetting. If I click hard and do it. So there's still some functionality we need to add because we need to make those go away, but we'll get to that in a second. So after we click the easy button, we're gonna to need to generate some new colors. Colors equals generate random colors, num squares. Now I'm gonna pick a new color equals pick color. Then we need to change this, the RGB part, to that picked color. Text content equals picked color. Let's refresh, click easy, and you'll see it's generating new colors. It's not updating the colors here, but it's generating new colors because it's updating that. Now we need to actually set the colors. And this is also where we're going to make these bottom three disappear. We're going to need a for loop for this. For let i equals zero, i is less than squares dot length, i plus plus, and we're doing squares dot length because we need to loop through all of the squares, whether there's three or six, not just the three that are in colors. So if colors i, in other words, if there is a color for that square, so if for zero, one, and two, there will be a color, for three, four, and five, there will not. So if there is one, squares i dot style dot background color equals colors i. So that'll do it for the top three. Else, we want to set the um, color to the same color as the background. Squares i dot style. And actually, we can just do it another way so I can just show it to you. Display equals none. And this will just make it so they're not displayed on the screen at all. 
So when I click easy, they're no longer displayed on the screen. Now if I click hard, nothing. I mean, they don't come back because we haven't set that up yet. But if I click easy over and over again, it works. And now let's just add the logic, that same or similar logic for the hard button. So right now all we're doing is we're adding classes, but now we want to set num squares equal to six. Colors equals generate random colors, and we want num squares of them. Remember we just set that equal to six up here. We're gonna pick a new color, equals pick color. We're going to update the RGB color display dot text content equals pick color. And that's you'll notice is the exact same as up here, and hopefully some of you are already thinking this isn't very dry, so yes, we're gonna have to refactor that later. And now we need to update the squares just like we did here, except this time we don't have to differentiate between the top row and the bottom row, we're just gonna do it to all of them. For let i equal zero, i is less than squares dot length, i plus plus squares i dot style, this is for the first row, dot background equals colors i, and that will loop through all of them and set the color, but we also, background color, I'm sorry, now we'll look through all of them and set the color, but we also need to bring these three back. So we can do that with squares i dot style dot display equals block. This will work fine. Now let's set it to easy mode, and then hard mode. Num squares is not defined. Okay. Num squares. If I could, easier if I can type. See? Now it works. Easy, hard, easy, hard. Now, because we use block here, we added a little bit extra work for ourselves. We could comment this out, comment this out, and instead set squares i dot background color equals black. That way, we're only modifying the background color. Easy, hard, easy, hard. Style dot background color. Easy, hard, easy. Why is that not working? Because I put a semicolon in the wrong spot. Easy, hard, easy, hard, easy, hard. See, so I mean, that makes it a little bit easier on us. I just wanted to show you the display none as that's an option. So we'll just stick with that to make our life easier. And that is the logic for the easy and the hard buttons. And we've all also added num squares to track state already. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.